Veterinary medicine is a messy business both physically and emotionally. Vetsplaining is one veterinarian's attempt to explain and understand her own profession a little better. Join Dr. Lisa McFadden as she delves deep into the medical and business aspects of veterinary medicine. Vetsplaining is moving up in the world. We got a couple of announcements. I have a website now so that if you wanted yet another place to be able to click and easily listen to the podcasts, you can go to my website. It's a little complicated because it's a free site and I actually really liked the program. It's called Wix and the website is drmcfadden, M-C-F-A-D-D-I-N dot Wix, W-I-X site, S-I-T-E dot com forward slash website. And on there, you will find additional links for all of the podcasts. You will also find quick links to We're Now on Spotify. Yay! And, you know, it's funny because it sounds really fancy, but really all I did was fill out a form and and then Spotify let me be on there. But it's really hard and it's a very choosy, choosy host site. Not everybody, everybody is allowed to be on there. So we are now on Spotify and on the website you can... Click the links to take you directly to Spreaker to listen to the podcasts. There's also articles that I've written as well as handouts that I've written for clients uh, that now anybody can download as a PDF document. So tons of learning for all. Yay! And as I add new articles or new handouts, uh, and there's a couple other things I have in the works, I'll be adding it to that website. So hop on, tool around, and if you have any questions, the... um, part for the contact us will actually take you to independent hill so that it goes uh, to the clinic and then and then i'll be able to get your feedback and your comments quandaries concerns complaints etc so this is going to be a two-part series i had the honor of speaking with dr heather lorenzer who works for the american animal hospital association and she is their veterinary advisor for professional and public relations and she is a pretty amazing woman she's had quite the career and in part one we are going to talk about Dr. Lorenzo herself as far as you know how her career evolved and developed and what led her to her current position we'll talk a little bit about the concepts behind AHA the American Animal Hospital Association we did talk about how AHA contributes to the betterment of the veterinary profession in our oh yeah AHA podcast but we kind of move past that as far as you know yes they do have these amazing standards and you can become accredited which i recommend every hospital do and why the accreditation process is important and we we covered that we're kind of taking the next step right this is episode two and actually this is episode 26 yay and so we're going to talk about other projects that aha has and how they are through those projects continuing to better the veterinary profession Without further ado, I will turn you guys over to the interview that I had. And the audio is pretty good. It was my first time doing a big girl interview over Skype, but I think that it worked out pretty well, and I hope you guys enjoy it. I like how it says, avoid legal snags by telling people they're being recorded. (laughs) (laughs) Noted. It is recording. Exactly. I tried to angle my camera so you could see the butterflies in the background. No, it's good. You don't need it. (laughs) You totally can. No, I love it. And I, um, I work, I work from home most of the time. And so I actually have my own little room like set up. Yeah, I like it. To do yeah. this. And so I can like switch out my show. Oh, nice. my, yeah. So I get to kind of choose what I want to have behind me because um, you don't want to see anything else in the house other than this corner. So this <laughs> corner looks like I've got my act together. Hi guys. Uh, my name is Dr. Heather Lenzer. Uh, I am a um, recovering emergency room veterinarian and now I'm the senior veterinary officer for the American Animal Hospital Association. So I spent, I graduated in 2003, spent three years practicing uh, general medicine in an AHA accredited hospital in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And then um, I was the type of veterinarian that referred a lot, a lot of referring, and ended up becoming friends with uh, our local emergency, or a local um, specialty and emergency hospital, which is Carolina Veterinary Specialists. And um, they invited me to join their emergency room staff. And I thought that that would be fine and probably not much different than general practice. And for if there's any veterinarians listening, you're laughing right now because you know there's a huge difference between general practice and ER, but um, I didn't know that at the time. 
So I um, jumped in feet first into the crazy world of uh, emergency room medicine and uh, fell in love. Uh, <laughs> didn't sleep very much, uh, didn't eat a lot, uh, saw some really sad, scary stuff, but I also work with some incredible people, uh, both veterinarians and technicians and receptionists and support staff. So uh, really fell in love with the veterinary teams um, doing emergency and uh, doing emergency medicine. So I did that for 10 years, which is like 150 years in, uh, in practice lifetime, because you see so much crazy stuff um, on the ER floor. So um, at the same time, I, um, which just sounds nuts when I say it out loud, I um, was invited to be on the, uh, the board, the board of directors for the American Animal Hospital Association, and, um, and did that for um, two years and uh, fell in love with AHA. So now I have two loves. I have emergency medicine and the American Animal Hospital Association. And then a third thing fell into my lap, which was um, television and public relations. I live near New York City, and I, um, I answered a Facebook ad looking for veterinarians who might wanna be on a reality TV show um, that practice emergency medicine. And at the time I lived in a, I practiced at a gorgeous specialty hospital in New Jersey, brand spanking new. And I'm like, Oh, I can do that too. I can just do it. Oh gosh, when I say it out loud, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I can do a reality TV show. Oh, I also had like a one-year-old and a three-year-old at the time. Oh, okay. So I was clearly completely insane. So anyway, I put in, um, they're called sizzle reels, which is uh, like a video you put together of what you can do. One of my friends got a new camera and he's like, I'll, you know, I won't charge you for this. I just need to know how to use it because I have to shoot a bunch of fancy people in a couple days and I have no idea how to use it. So I'll happily, you know, I'll, I'll do it for you. So um, my sizzle reel uh, got the attention of nobody and I didn't make the cut for the, uh, the reality TV show, um, which was OK in retrospect. <laughs> but um, the person who was in charge of kind of finding the veterinarians was a... Um, producer with the Mar with Martha Stewart and her name is Barb fight and Barb and I um, fell in work love with each other and she ended up being my media trainer and um, between for the three years after that um, Barb and I were on pretty much every television talk show news show you can think of um, and I was promoting aha so we did the Today Show and Dr. Oz and Rachel Ray did a Martha Stewart um, radio session. Um, gosh, really, uh, Mar Meredith Vieira, Megan Kelly did a lot of Fox News at the time. And um, it was just like this whirlwind. In the midst of all that, I was getting really tired, surprisingly. And um, and I had sort of, you know, let my, the, the, my, my close, my inner circle kind of know, you know, I'm getting, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, this is not really sustainable. And um, the... The, the staff and the board of the American Animal Hospital Association saw all the things that I was doing from a television and PR standpoint and thought that I might be able to serve the organization better being on staff instead of being um, a volunteer board member. So um, I was invited to join the staff um, back in 2015 and, um, and I've been there ever since. It was um, quite a journey and, uh, and the lesson I learned there is, um, you know, say yes to everything until you can't anymore. And if you don't think you can do something, maybe that's true. But honestly, for the veterinarians and the technicians that are out there right now, um, our industry has given us a very unique set of skills that we think only applies within the clinic walls. And it doesn't. It applies um, far, far, far beyond. We're so passionate about the knowledge that we hold that we are willing to do some pretty crazy stuff I, mean, I don't know how many times I was on television with dogs wearing boots. There's so many, and I had boots that lit up and, uh, but I mean, because boots on dogs is great television, right? Just think about the zoom up with the feet and everything. But in the main, in the same time, I can also talk to people about the importance of managing pain for arthritis and yes, boots are a good thing. Um, but also what else do you need to, to do to take care of your, your dog or your aging dog? Uh, so, um, yeah, it's been an absolutely insane, crazy ride, and um, and I am not unique in um, in my abilities. We all actually have these. It's just having the the guts or the insanity to um, 
to really do something different. And I have done a lot of very different things. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> What was the name of the reality show? I think it's my, and did it actually get produced? So it, um, good question. So there is a show that's on right now. It's on CBS and it's a beautiful veterinarian, Dr. Chris, it's something, he's from Australia and, and he, um, his show was already in the can. And what that means, it was already shot. Um, it had already been shot in Australia. And so CBS didn't have to reshoot anything. They could just take something that was produced in Australia and launch it here. And he's still on. And so he's like surfing and like rescuing koalas and like diving with dolphins. And like, I mean, nobody. <laughs> That's can... what I do every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, I'm okay that I lost <laughs> to that beautiful man and his koalas and his dolphins. Like that's, you know, we're the adversary. Cheers to you. See, in my head, I was thinking more of like a big brother, real world kind of show with uh -huh. a bunch of veterinarians, you know? That, that, <laughs> that, would, be, that would be really interesting. Um, yeah. But no, it, it, that was what that's because there's this whole other world of educational television where there's a lot more um, slots that you can get into other than reality television, than reality TV. So I learned way more about television than I thought. Yeah. You know, if there's any veterinarians out there that have an educational program. Um, there, there's more, there's more time slots for that. Cause actually the government has, um, a, uh, requires a certain amount of television to be educational, which wow. doesn't have to be the case, right? When you think about the stuff that's on TV, but yeah. that, um, that is the case. It's like the diet Coke of all the M&Ms that they have. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Those are my plugs. <laughs> this episode <laughs> brought to you by diet Coke. <laughs> so for your media training, was it things like how to speak or how to answer questions, how to, because I'm sitting here with my mouth open the whole time because I'm so intrigued and I'm assuming that's frowned upon if you're actually on television. Right, right. So I'm a theater kid. I grew up um, in the theater. Um, so there was probably some stuff I learned from theater training that um, didn't have to be taught to me by my media trainer. I, so the, whatever is sort of what, if someone has never been in front of the camera or never been on stage, that's a wh whole other bunch of training, um, which I recommend if, if people are interested in that because um, it certainly allows well, for crazy opportunities, like even just talking to you today, you know, <laughs> if, I, if it wasn't for, for what I learned from um, my friend Barb, I wouldn't be here. So, so there's that stuff, but what I, um, because I kind of had that under control, um, from a lot of years of work, um, what, what I learned was primarily um, television and how to pitch shows and then how to produce them, write them. Um, we wrote, uh, everything was scripted, didn't look like it was, <laughs> uh, but it was. And, uh, and so if you think about like, just like we were on the Today Show a bunch and you think about whenever there's someone, you know, there'll be two hosts and then the guests, I mean, yeah, two, two hosts. So Kathy Lee and Hoda, which we were on with them. And so they're on my right and my left, and then I'm in the middle and I'm doing something and we're moving down a table, usually from left to right, um, and showing something, demonstrating something. So a good example is anytime they're like cooking anything, you know, you start off and you pour the flour and you salt or whatever, and then you move on to the next bowl where it's all mixed. And then you move on to the next bowl where it's going in the oven and then you move on to the next one and it's in the oven and you pull it out. So I did that only with dogs. Um, a and couple no of ovens. cats. Uh, we did cats. That's cats are bad TV. Love you, Kitty. <laughs> Love you. Getting getting cats that are comfortable that actually look happy on TV is very very difficult. So, um, the I, I did one. I did one segment, and I so I we were on with I was on with Al Roker, and it was uh, a, a segment on summer dangers. And yes, there are summer dangers for cats but I didn't really want there to be any because I didn't want to bring a cat on. Well, the producers disagreed with me. And so they brought in kittens, which sounds fun, but we had um, like, you can't put kittens on a table. Like where do you put the kittens? <laughs> so, and what am I going to say? I had to come up with some, I ended up talking about feline heartworm disease. So threw that in there. Right. And sure. I think feline leukemia too. So it was in there, but they put them in this like round picture, like a round baby pen, like, but it's made out of plexiglass. So it's like a, underwater treadmill, a round underwater treadmill. Um, and it was about, probably about maybe two, three feet tall, the walls were. And um, so they're thinking, oh, the kittens will just like play in there and have fun. Like we'll give them some yarn and other things you shouldn't give cats, but we'll just do that because it looks good on TV. And then the camera can shoot through the plexiglass.